Hello my friends, P. Walpar here. Yesterday's blog, I was, I was talking about wheel squeal. And I never got around to explaining my ideas behind it. The video was getting too long and I cut it short. But I'm going to continue part two of the wheel squeal and attempt to uh, explain it. But I just about opened a can of worms even I can't explain. Some of the engineers, biggest engineers on the, in the engineering department can't seem to explain it. Now I was going to explain to you about the, the weight in the center of the rail is distributed here. But this is a cutaway version of a curved plate wheel the way it's designed if you was to cut right down through it. You got the rim of the wheel and the flange of the wheel. The wheel plate that goes up to the axle there. So we're, we're looking at two rails. In a curve one rail can be higher than the other when it usually is. It's what they call canting, canting the rail so it can get around the curve and keep your weight distributed to the middle. It's like leaning in a race. You wouldn't lean out. And I was going to explain to you about the lateral forces, centrifugal force pushing the wheel flange up against the rail, and it does do that. It wears out the, if you'll see right here, the inside face of the head of the rail. This is the head of the rail, this is the web of the rail, and this is the rail foot. But you can't contribute all the wheel squeal, although some of it's from this. The rails wear out the way I've drawn it erased off right here. But in researching this, I've opened up a whole new can of worms that even I can't explain, and it's definitely open for debate. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's take this diagram I drew here. Say this is a racetrack. You got some horses racing around this racetrack. Well, it's a shorter distance on the inside rail going around here than it is to run on the outside of that track going around. So say you got two horses. They're both running 20 miles an hour. The horse on the inside of the rail is definitely going to win. When they get to the finish line, he's going to be a good distance ahead of him. They're both running at the same speed. Now keep that in mind. Now let's go, let's open the trucks. Now remember, trucks have two pair of wheels with a solid iron axle. The wheels are the same diameter. They're going to go the same speed. If this wheel's going 20 miles an hour, this wheel's going to be going 20 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, whatever. There's no way that this wheel can magically run faster than this wheel. They're on a solid axle. Keep that in mind. All right, let's say this is a railroad track. And this is a curve. If I measure the inside rail of this curve, from here to here, say I get 300 feet. I guarantee you if I measure that outside rail, it's going to be longer. It's a farther distance around that curve. So let's say it comes out 305 feet. It's farther around the outside of the curve than it is the inside of the curve. So we've got a train coming down the track going 50 miles an hour. This wheel is going 50 miles an hour. This wheel is going 50 miles an hour. But somehow they magically get do the same distance. When this wheel gets to this point, the other wheel will still be up with it even though it wasn't going as fast. You can't give that, the only way that horse going around the track is going to tie, somebody get out on that racetrack and give his ass a push. It's the same way with this wheel, this outside wheel it's got to be sliding on the rail to get to this point at the same time this 50 mile an hour wheel was going. The only way it could be doing it is sliding on the rail causing a high pitch squeal. That's my idea of what's causing the squeal. And uh, the topic is open for debate. Anyway, it kind of takes a rocket scientist to explain it. And I've done my best. What's your opinion?